heavy the recoil it, it's quite a bit and my shooting offhand has never been all that good so this is going to be fun to see then I'll show you the gun Wow this is the Browning model 71 this was manufactured in 1985. This is 2700 of 3000 that Browning made at the time. This is a fine example of a reproduction of the Winchester Model 71. Has some very nice stamped engraving on it. Some checkering on the forend there on two panels. And you'll notice a little nature scene with a couple of elk on the left side. Those are in gold. We do have a pistol grip stock in the back with some checkering there and a fairly decent grade of wood on this. 24 inch barrel, 1 in 12 twist. And back in the 80s when Browning introduced this rifle they needed to make sure that there was some ammunition to feed it, you know, batteries included. And this is the 348 Winchester this is a high intensity round for the time. We're shooting 200 grain Hornady FTX today. The velocity is around 2450 or so with a 200 grain projectile. Man. All sorts of energy there. Winged it. A little high pressure. Like starting a lawnmower. The powder I was using was IMR 4831. We're going to go with a little faster powder. Maybe 4320, because take a look at the primers. You can notice that there is some bolt face engraving, as well as a line that's been formed into the primer itself. Here's an original Model 71 made in 1946, and on the rack there we have the Browning Model 71 that was made in 1985. The ejector on the Browning seems to intersect very closely with the firing pin hole. Take a look at the original Winchester. You can see how far away the ejector is on that design, which I would say is a better design. And the end result is, is that you do get, your primers are going to be engraved with a line. It doesn't seem to cause any problem, but it does take a mark off, in my opinion, for the Browning design because you really don't want to have the primer flowing into that area where the ejector is located. You know, if you shear off a little piece of that, then you've got yourself a real problem inside the action. And these aren't the easiest guns to service. Okay, we got the chronograph running with our load of 45 grains of IMR 4320. Um, Got a steel target down there at 100 yards. Aiming on the top of the plate. 2,058 feet per second. So doing a function test on the reduced velocity loads. These are lower pressure and the first thing you'll notice that the recoil becomes more manageable just by reducing that velocity by 400 feet per second. The gun cycles flawlessly and the load that I used 
for you guys out there that want to have a more pleasant round is 45 grains of IMR 4320 and a 200 grain projectile. Here's an example of a higher intensity round and you'll notice immediately that the recoil energy is quite a bit more. The gun becomes a little bit unmanageable and with these rifles you have to be careful not to amp the pressure up too much or you will have cycling problems with them. As a class one rifle, if you're hunting for Triceratops, Brontosaurus, Stegosaurus.